Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the living Jesus. Hallelujah. Isn't it good? Yes. All the time. Amen. Amen. I think I can we can close and go home because Reverend Kolingo has speech already with you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Reverend and Sister Caro and all those who contribute to this wonderful worship. I cannot sing. That's one thing when I get to heaven, I will ask God why. <laughs> he didn't give me a voice <laughs> to sing. Amen? Amen. I want to thank all of you and thank the leadership of the house for the grace you have bestowed upon me to be among you. Shall we come before the Lord in prayer? I want us to commit a minute prayer for our Asian communities. We all see what is going on around the nation. If it's one group today, it can be another group tomorrow. So let's lift them up in prayer. Amen. And Father, we thank you for the privilege you have given to us to come before your throne of grace. We ask that you forgive us our sins and cleanse us. Father, I don't deserve to be here. It's because of your grace. So hide me behind the cloud and cover me with your presence. Open our ears to hear what your spirit is saying to us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I have 30 minutes, so everybody keep praying for me. We are going to continue the series that our pastor has started with us the book of Exodus. So today we are in Exodus chapter 14, a very familiar scripture, a familiar topic that we are all very, we can easily, when somebody mentioned it, we can mention what it is. It's about Moses. It's not about brother Moses anyway. It's Moses, <laughs> Moses in the Bible, amen. amen. These things Paul said, reading from Romans 15 verse 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through the scriptures and the encouragement they provide, we might have hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So as we go through this scripture today, I pray that I will achieve three things we will learn something from this very chapter. Number two, it will encourage somebody, wherever you are, whether here or those watching online. Three, give us hope. Because we are in a time where we need a lot of hope to be able to continue the journey as Christians. Today, I will speak to you from the topic, the power of God. Hallelujah. The power of God. We serve a great God, and our God is a sovereign God. He has the ability to do anything he wants to do. He has the authority to create and to dismantle. He has the power to give and to take away. He has the power to do whatever pleases him. He has the power to raise the dead. And he has the power to allow a child to be born into the world. His power has no limit. 
What an awesome God we serve. Hallelujah. From the scriptures that we read, we have seen the nature of Pharaoh. And in this chapter 14, verse 5 said, When the king of Egypt was told that the people of Israel had fled, which is a lie, because I believe that Moses went in front of him. Pharaoh and his officials had changed. The NIV said their mind changed. They changed their minds about them and said, what have we done? We have let the Israelites go and lost their services. Amen? Amen? We have let the Israelites go and lost their services. The power that Pharaoh is going to use to pursue Israel has a mission. But while he was thinking about this, God has already talked to Moses. Moses, the mouthpiece of God. Moses, the great prophet. The one who God speaks to him face to face. The one who can hear what God says and declare and it comes to pass. Moses, the one who has a, a bad history of his past, but yet God used him. Amen? And so Moses will hear what God was telling them. He said to him, Tell the Israelites to come here. They are going to come between Migdal and the sea. This is on their journey going to their promised land. But they have to come somewhere. And in their camping while they were there, the uh, Egyptians are also taking plan. And their plan is, why do we let them go? Mark chapter 7 verse 21 says, From within the heart of men comes evil thoughts, sexual immoralities, murder, and adultery. They change their hearts. And out of their heart now came these spirits to pursue. Watch out when somebody's heart or somebody's mind is changed against you. It's not an easy thing to be around people whose mind have changed towards you. But God is sovereign. Amen? Amen? He is sovereign because he has a strategy. So when he was telling them to come between the sea, they obeyed and they went there. But as a matter of fact, it was God's divine strategy. Because the word of God says, it will appear to the Egyptians that the Israelites are stranded. So here they are, they are in the wilderness, and the wilderness is swallowing them. And then they will take their step, their next step, to pursue and to destroy. But God said he will be glorified. Amen? Amen. As we are going through these scriptures, I pray that we will not look at the nation Egypt in Africa. Because it's not about Egypt in Africa. This is about a divine message that is given to us, the church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because each and every one of us, we have an Egypt. Egypt is where we were, we were in bondage. And once upon a time, we heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when we heard the gospel, we came out of our Egypt. But then on our journey to go to internal life, the glorious life that is promised us, there is a pursuit. Amen? Amen. There is a pursuit. And so this Pharaoh who is wicked, he himself will take the lead. He will not send his army, but he will be among the army. The word said he has 600 chariots, best, the best of his chariots. Not just only that, he has other chariots with officers on them. So the army was furious. It was an army that when your eyes see, it will cause something to tremble within you. And so they pursue. They pursue with their might. 
the fear that brought the one to come upon them has an impact. Maybe sometimes we underestimate what fear can do to us. Do you have any fear in your life? If you do, I just want you to listen to few things that fear can do to us. Fear can cause us to be trapped. Fear can cause us to doubt God or doubt ourselves or the ability God has given to us. Fear can sometimes cause us to be paralyzed or make us confused or turn us into complainants. And that exactly you will hear later on what Israel was saying to Moses. Or fear can cause us to fight the wrong person in our lives. It's like the cat in the house. Your, your bank account is low and you're thinking about how you're going to pay bills. Then all of a sudden you see the cat going around and it was making meow and you kick the cat. Like, get out of here. It's not the cat. It's your bank account. But the poor cat had to take the bullet. Sometimes fear do that to us. And sometimes out of the fear, we learn to cry. And we cry out to the one who can save us. The purpose of this is not because fear cannot paralyze you. But yes, it's because fear can paralyze you. Wherever it is, Maybe fear of going out, fear of taking the next project, fear of taking the next step of what God is calling you into, but you do not want to. Nobody likes to lose a good worker. They had to pursue them, and already they have injected fear into them. The Bible said because they have lost their services, they pursue. This is what I call the spirit of Pharaoh. The spirit of Pharaoh have a message. The spirit of Pharaoh is alive and is working within us and among us. The spirit of Pharaoh have a way of running behind your heels. You think that you have solved one problem, but next thing you realize another one pop up. And he makes sure that he's going to let you be in distress. Psalm 120 verse 1 said, In my distress I cry unto the Lord, and he heard me. So as they were following them, Israel would turn out from whatever is going on and cry out unto God. Because now they are going to see the power of God. The power of God, when the power of God show up, fear has no power to stay. Amen. When the power of God showed up, fear has no ground in your life and my life. Amen. When the power of God showed up, it dismantled every root of fear in Amen. you. Amen. Why am I saying that? I am a product of that. There is no way I could have stand before you if it's not because of the power of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if God can help me do this, whatever he's asking you to do, his power is sufficient for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so from verse 13, we will see, they started to do their thing. The first thing that came to them when they saw the Israelites marching behind them, this is where they went. And so Moses is going to speak. In the time of fear, you need something that, or you need somebody to speak to you. And the person that is going to speak to you do not need to speak fear. You need to speak faith. Amen? Amen. So Moses, who has seen the power of God through the bush, the burning bush, he has been delivered from, from Pharaoh who he was afraid to go and face. He has obtained something from the Lord. And so he said to them, do not be afraid, number one. Number two, stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. 
you will see the deliverance that God will bring to you. The Egyptians you see today, you will see them no more tomorrow. That's the message for us. In this pandemic, so many have lost their lives. So many have lost their loved ones. So many have lost their jobs. Maybe you don't belong to that group. So this message might not be for you. But for those who are suffering with your loved ones who are going through sickness, for those of you who have lived, you have to leave your job to take care of your children, for those of you who you don't know where your next paycheck is going to come from, for those of you who your children are so stressed, this message is for you. Fear not. Fear not, but stand still. The Lord is going to fight for you. Because whatever you are seeing today that is making you to terrify, you will see it tomorrow, no more. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The third one, he said, the Lord will fight for you. You will only, you only have to be still. I've already said what fear can do. So let me express myself what standing firm or standing still can do. When the Lord calls us, he does not call us to be all over the place. When they saw, I can imagine that truth. Israel came out of Egypt, a large number of people. So I can imagine what chaos was going on in that, in that fence, in that camp. But Moses says, stand still. Why stand still? Because when you stand still, it takes away distraction from you. I remember when we were trying to let the children, the youth, start to do things. One of the things, Sister Linda Nash did a good job with them. And some of them, don't be offended because I'm not putting you down. It's just an illustration. When they get behind the camera, they had to keep on moving. And Sister Linda would be like, no dancing. You know? But that is a way of like shedding the fear in you. And I used to be the same. And so when we are not standing firm, we are distracted. Because when they are, they are dancing behind the camera, Guess what? It distracts you, the one who is watching them. And so God is saying, be still. And in this book of Psalms, he said, be still and know that I am the Lord. I will be exalted in the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. So God, Moses has heard this from the Lord. And he was telling them, be still. Be still because the Lord that you have you are believing, he has the power to deliver you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He has said he has the power to deliver you. Amen. Nothing is too big for him. Hallelujah. Amen. So he told them, be still. So what is making you be distracted? Television? Your phone? iPads? WhatsApp? Instagram? Every one of them, Facebook, Netbook, all the books that are out there. Hallelujah. If you're using them to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ, then it's good. But if it takes more than 30 minutes out of your time, you are not standing still. And all of you say, we are guilty. Amen. Amen. So God is saying, take the distraction away. That's what he was telling Moses to tell the people. Stop the distraction. Be still. Because when you are distracted, when God is speaking, there is no way you can hear what he's saying. Hallelujah. Because you are too much into something that you will not hear. So something is pursuing you. And instead of you staying put, to hear from the one who will give you the direction of escape. You are going to your friends on Facebook. And they have no clue what to do with your problems. 
And so the problems continues. Hallelujah. Be still. Stand firm. You will see the salvation of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Trouble will always come. It's not the trouble that comes to our lives, but it's how we deal with the trouble. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We serve a powerful God. So in the midst of where they are going to go through this drama, when you read about all that Pharaoh went through with them, it's like drama. Let the people go. They are going to worship their God. They don't want to worship your gods. And Pharaoh said, yes, now finally go. But he realized that, oh, he has missed a good tenant. That's what the devil does. If you are good, you are a good customer to Satan, when you leave, he wants to come back to bring you. When you are out there drinking and drunk, you can drink all night. Get up drunk, go to bed drunk. So the moment you say, no, I'm not going to be drunk by alcohol anymore, I will let the Holy Spirit make me drunk. So I could do the work of God, Satan will come after you. Because he has lost a good customer. Hallelujah. Amen. And so here, they will continue the fight. But guess what? Our God is a God of war. He's a strategic God. He owned the heavens and the earth. He created everything that is in it. And he has the power. He knows what to move and what not to move. For you to get that breakthrough that you need. Israel is going to get a breakthrough. And you are going to get a breakthrough. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you will only listen to what the word of God is saying. Amen. If you, you only listen to what the Holy Spirit is saying. He said he will have ears. Let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. He didn't say go to Facebook. And check what your neighbors are saying. Hallelujah. He will have ears. Let him hear what the Lord is saying, what the Spirit of God is saying. Faith. That's why I said, Reverend Kulinko, I preach already, we can go home. It takes a word of faith. It's part of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. When you have a word of, you have that gift of, of faith inside of you, Everybody will say, the ship is going to sink, and you will say, no, the ship is not going to sink. Amen? Amen? Because although you don't know the outcome, you believe in the one that is going to bring the outcome. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so when you are going through, you need somebody who will speak faith into you. Not somebody. So they have Moses. And Moses will continue his speaking to them. And so... After they complain, they realize that these, these troops are not going anywhere. They are right behind them. And so they started crying to Moses, why you brought us here? There are no graves in, in, in Egypt. This is why we told you, leave us there. And this is what trouble does. When trouble comes, the leaders are in trouble. So the leaders in the house, don't take it personal. When the attacks are coming, it's not about you. Amen? Amen. And so Moses did not pay attention to their complaint. He went to God. And he started crying to God. And God would speak to Moses. And he said to Moses, why are you crying to me? Tell the people to move on. Tell them to move on. Because the time for your camping is over. Sometimes we stay at the camp too long. Even when trouble is coming and God says, move on because we are not listening, we are still in the camp and the enemy can come and destroy us. So he said to them, tell them to move on. Not just move on, but you, Moses, you have a job to do. Raise up your staff and then stretch your hand over the sea and part the sea so Israel will go on dry land. And the Egyptians will think they can do the same. They will follow, and I will trap them, and I will get the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen. Amen. He is powerful. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He is so powerful. Amen. 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 What did Moses have? Moses have just a dry, the rod they call is just a dry stick. But a dry stick in Moses' hand is a miracle drop. It's a miracle too. 
Amen. Amen. It's the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. A dry tree, a, just a dry stick can do miracle. And you will see a mighty army that in the ancient time they were ruling will be brought to their knees. Moses obeyed because he has used this rod before. What have you used before that has worked for you? Whatever has worked for you, if prayer has worked for you, when the enemy is chasing you, go on prayer. If you know that worship, that's why I love worship. Because I remember from the ministry I came from before I came here, when they start to worship, every demon flies. I was going there with birdies, but before they finished worshiping, some of my birdies were being ripped off of me like onions is being peeled off of me. Worship is a tool. Worship is a dangerous weapon. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is why we had to worship. Worship not from our lips, but from our hearts. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moses have a staff, but there is power of God in that staff. There is power of God in your worship. Hallelujah. Amen. There is power of God in the word of God that you speak that comes out of you. That is faith talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is power in whatever God puts inside of you. If you let it out, it goes out and it manifests what God said. He said, I will send my word and it will go and do exactly what I want it to do. It will not return to me void. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Moses will obey. And God has a purpose. He said, I will gain glory through Pharaoh and all his army. Not just that, the Egyptians will know that I am Lord when I gain glory through Pharaoh. Your situation is not there. For the enemy to gain glory. He will never gain glory. Amen. On the situation of the children of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Because in your situation, God will be glorified. Amen. In, your, in your troubles, God is going to gain the glory. Amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. You have to do your part like Moses did. You have to be obedient like Moses was. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you don't, then don't blame God. It's you. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to play your part. When the power of God comes to our situations, regardless of how dark the situation is, it will turn into joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When I was walking here today, I have so much joy in my spirit. I have so much joy. I don't know where it's coming from. Amen. But I know you are praying for me. Amen. So I have joy in my heart. Amen. And it's part of the fruit of the Spirit. He gives us joy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so God has given us this power. The power that is in him, he gave it to us. Amen. He showed it on the behalf of the Egyptians. And he can show it on your behalf. Amen. So Moses did his part. And exactly as God said, you see, we serve a God who is not a liar. Amen. It's not like Satan. He will tell you one thing. If he give you a dollar watcher, it will come for 20000 in your bank account. Amen. Our God is not like that. If he said, give me a tithe and you give it to him, he's going to multiply it. Amen. He's a multiplier. Amen. Hallelujah. So his word is true. Whatever he has said to you from the beginning of this year, hold on to it. It's going to come to pass. Amen. Write it down somewhere. Amen. Go back to it. Visit it over and over. Read it to yourself. Amen. Believe in it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is going to work for you. Amen. Even when everything is telling you it's not going to work, tell the devil he's a liar. And he will always be a liar. Amen. 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 Because the word of God has power. And it will work for you. Amen. 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 So Egyptians encounter. The power of God. The word of God says, the cloud moved and when it stood behind them and it created like, a, like a, a border between them and Israel. 
So while they were in darkness, Israel is enjoying light. May that be your portion. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so he showed himself strong. And he let the, the east wind blow. I can pray on this more than I can preach on this topic. Hallelujah. Amen. He made the east wind blow. And the, where the east wind was blowing, the, 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 rib, the, the sea had to part. What an amazing God. Amen. He can command the wind to move. He move a mighty ocean and cause the ocean to, to give way for his children to walk on. What is it that you are going through that God cannot do? Hallelujah. And so the wind obey him. And we will see that when Jesus came in the storm, the wind and the waves, they obey him. Hallelujah. We serve a good God. He is mighty. So now... Israel will go through it. The sea has given them the way. The winds have helped them. Moses' rod has helped them. These are all common things we can see. But when the power of God entered into it, it became a dangerous tool to the enemy. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, the Egyptians thought that they are going to go through it. They were pursuing them on dry land. But when they enter into the sea, the seabed was wet, and God will cause the wheels of their chariots to be jammed. They were not able to ride fast like they want to anymore. And now they realize that God is fighting for Israel. And that is exactly what is going to happen in your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you obey, if you obey, you will see them pursuing, but their intents that they are pursuing it will be decreased because God is causing confusion in their riders. And then they realize that the power of God is too much for them. Satan is too late. It's too late for you to go back. As soon as they decided that, okay, this is impossible fight. Because they cannot ride fast enough to get to their target. To draw them back to go and serve them. Now they decided that where here is the hopelessness. Here is the fear. What the enemy meant for them, for Israel, it became the portion of the Egyptians. What the enemy meant for you, God will turn it to be the portion of your enemies. Amen. Hallelujah. And so all of a sudden, they could not do anything anymore. And now here comes the power of God. The Lord will allow the mighty waters to rage and crush Pharaoh and his chariots and all their army and every weapon they have into the death of the sea. Next week, Pastor will continue. We will see how deadly they fell. I love when Mira was singing. They fell like a, a lead into the deep of the waters. So it shall be the portion of the enemies Amen. that are pursuing the ministry of Jesus Christ. Amen. That are pursuing the things pertaining to the cross of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because everything is about him. This is the Lord who we serve. He is worthy to Amen. be praised. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the best thing that we investment you can do in your life is to invest to know how to hear from God and to be obedient. Amen. It's the best investment. Forget about Wall Street and all the money you have at the bank. And this is the best treasure we can pass on or the best inheritance we can give our children. If we can teach them how to listen to God, and how to obey the one who created them. This is what our story is. It's a redemptive story. And that is the story of why he came to this world. His name is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 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 Everything is about him. Because he is the only one who died for you and me. The power of God that brought him into this world... Is the same power that sustained him 
in the midst and in the face of affliction and all the opposition. And he was able to, to maintain the course all the way to the cross. All the way to the cross. The crossing of the river, the, the Red Sea, is the same way like how Jesus redeemed you and me. When he stretched those hands, it's the same way like how Moses stretched his, his rod over the waters. When he stretched his hand on those cross, those ragged cross, those bloody cross, he took you away from what was pursuing you, from what was going to drown you. The Red Sea was the obstacle because there were no boats there to carry Israel. What you thought that it was going to be, the place you're going to die, he took you out of it. He Amen. paid the price. Amen. He did not leave you for anything to pay. He paid it all. Amen. He paid it all. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Satan thought that he has him when he saw him on the cross. Oh, but surprise, surprise. The third day will come. Hallelujah. The Bible said on the third day, early in the morning, yes, he rose from the grave. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our redemptive story. It's not just Israel that was redeemed from fear. You and I were redeemed from satanic powers. Amen. We were set free from opposition. No demon from hell can do anything to us. Amen. He said, behold, I give you power. Amen. The power that he's talking about is not talking about man's power. He's talking about his own power. Amen. Because when he sent his son to, to the world, he said, how God anoint Jesus Christ with power and the Holy Ghost. Amen. And he went around doing good. He was healing all those who were oppressed by the devil because God was with him. Amen. And in that same power, when Jesus left, he said to his disciples, go and stay at Jerusalem. Do not leave there until you are endowed with power from up high. Hallelujah, church. Hallelujah. That same power is Amen. for you and me. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is our redemptive story. And so for me and you, the message is simple. Christ has redeemed us from the curse, from the death that Satan has in him. Don't look at what you are seeing coming after you. They have been defeated already. Amen. The Father will hear you. Make it sure that you make it look just like Jesus did. Before he would go, he was asking the Father. In John 12, 27, he said, Now my soul is troubled. And what shall I say? Father, save me from this? No. No. It was for this reason I came to this hour. Then a voice came from heaven. Because Jesus was asking for the Father to be glorified. A voice came from heaven and he said, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Amen. This is what our aim has to be. That wherever we go in through, God will get the glory. Amen. Your part is to be obedient. May your life and my life, the struggle we go through, may we use that to know that there is power that is carrying us. May we use that to prove to the world that we serve a powerful God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He has the power to save. He has the power to deliver. He has the power to heal. And he has the power to restore our broken relationships. He has the power to give us victory where victory is not even possible. He has the power to touch us and we will never be the same. He has the power to give us peace. Hallelujah. If you are here this morning or you are watching me, from wherever you are, and something is pursuing you, 
you can just rise up and we will pray with you. Whatever is pursuing you, know that they have no power over you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If anyone has something stressing you and you want to be prayed for, I ask that you come forward. Because where the power of God is liberty. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't be afraid of those who will look at you. Just let the Lord do what he has to do. Amen. And when you come, please maintain our social distancing. Amen. And those of you who are watching online, maybe you think that that diagnosis the doctor gave you will kill you, that the devil is a liar. You will live. Amen. You will not die. You will live to declare the works of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. Those of you who are sitting down, I will ask you if you don't mind to please stand and stretch forth your hands to our sisters who are before us. And maybe somebody else, the Lord, by hearing this message, your fear is gone. Amen. And you will step out in faith Amen. and do what God wants you to do. Amen. Stretch forth your hands towards them. And Father, we thank you that your word is true. We thank you that there is power in your word. Therefore, as your servants, have you, as your children has come forth, together with one accord, Father, we pray thee that you stretch forth your hand and touch them. Amen. Whatever their situation is, Father, we decree that, Lord, you will turn it around Amen. for your good. Amen. And, Lord, you will gain the glory. Amen. And they will come and testify that there is a God who saved. They will come and testify that, Lord, you brought them through. Amen. We give you the glory Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.